My name is Rosalie Midget. I'm a Raleigh sculptor. I first encountered clay when I was at Elon. My teacher, I remember, said to my mother that I've got the bug. After that, I moved to Asheville for a more art-centered focus. That's where I made most of my discoveries about ceramics. I graduated there with a BFA. My family's in the Triangle, so I've been here basically all of my life. I took a lot of my work from Asheville and I still incorporate it in my work today. I work in a studio in Durham called Silverado Makers and Fabricators, and one of my friends, Ben Reed, actually went to uh, Asheville with me. So I have a studio in downtown Raleigh on Glenwood Avenue, and then I also work in Durham. These sculptures are made hollow with large slabs of clay. I actually build them upside down, so I make the base first. That way it helps me get a universal feel for what the sculpture looks like. I continue to flip over and turn the piece as I'm working the whole way around. I use paddles to, to punch in on the sides and I use the trapped air on the inside to inflate the ridges so I have a very strong form. It's very compressed. The fins are built in an organic method. I have ideas about my sculptures. I have goals that I wish to achieve, but for the most part I work intrinsically. I let those sculptures speak to me. I let the form guide me and one of the things that I think is a signature to my work is the micacea surface treatment. One of the things that I discovered in Nashville, I was hiking up a stream bed and was just enamored by the large sheets of mica that were floating beneath me. So I took a bunch of them back to school, ground them down to a powder, and this is the surface treatment that I've applied to my sculptures. I learned the trick from one of my professors actually in Nashville as well. This has actually evolved into more of a ceramic treatment and some of my newer forms that are raccoon. But on these, it is layers and layers of colored mica and other pigments to create the surface treatment that you see that is done post-fire. I think this is one of my favorite pieces in the show. It's one of my newer terraforms. These are called terraforms because to me, it's like forming of the earth. I use the natural inspirations around me, like water moving or geological rocks. I actually use a lot of rocks to burnish the surface on these pieces, which is why they're so smooth. And this one to me is a great finishing piece of this series to where I have lots of height and a, a nice silhouette in between. I'm always looking at the contours of these pieces and how they're moving. Um, without the hollow void, it is, it is an important piece to me because it's not commanding. It is allowing you to spend time and, and energy or actually be passive and, and just let the sculpture be present and find yourself in a meditative state that's similar to the one that I'm in when I'm creating it. It's called Carved. It is a smaller rendition of some of my newer artwork. It has more detail on the surface. It's more manipulated. It has this void that is very captivating and allows you to wonder what is in this depth. Obviously, it looks a little bit like a seashell. Maybe it has some weathered wood components. I like to abstract my artwork and allow people to impose their own impressions on the style in which I've created. This again has layers of color on it that under bright light will really show. It is a, a new line of work for me that, that is very satisfying. One piece that I have to show from my studio that is in progress is this wax platter. As you can see, it has resembling car carvings to the shell. So this wax piece will be cre um, pressed into a sand investment. The sand investment will then melt out the wax and I'll cast it in bronze. The pieces that you see in this gallery are a jumping off point to my next line. So using the same techniques and the same skills that I've harnessed in my life with clay, I now am experimenting with wax as my sculptural medium, and I am moving towards outdoor art and moving towards metal sculpture. I was associated and invited to show here from work that was exhibited at the Durham Art Gallery. Also, a colleague of mine has worked with me at Bev's Fine Art. So through the Spotlight series at Bev's Fine Art, and through other invitationals around town, I have now developed a, a triage or a triangle of galleries that are hosting my work on rotation. The Frank being one, Craven Allen being number two, and Bev's Fine Art is number three. So you can find my work there year round. Additionally, I have another show that's a solo exhibition coming up at the Maria V. Howard Imperial Center in Rocky Mount. 
beautiful old tobacco um, tobacco building that has been restored into flood waters. And so you should see some large scale sculptures of mine there. I also have had work at Art Space and Visual Art Exchange and mostly jury shows. And artists who have inspired me, again, my ceramics teacher in Asheville, Megan Wolf, a dear friend, Alice Ballard, her concepts about sculptures being a moment in time resonates with me. Also, Tom Spleth, working with plaster, I'm starting to build with other materials and watching how that changes my aesthetic. In that, in that sense, I think we're moving towards Henry Moore and Alexander Calder as being some of my main inspirations, working towards a large scale and thinking about things architecturally so you can walk right underneath. I would love to have my work to be in the public realm and for people to phys physically interact with it the way I do when I'm building it. Thank you very much.